This is National Native News. I'm Antonia Gonzalez. British Columbia's Court of Appeal has sided with the Washington state man in a decade-long tribal sovereignty case. Emily Schwing has more. Sinaik's tribal member Rick Desitel lives on the reservation of the Confederated Tribes of the Colville in northeastern Washington. In 2009, he went elk hunting without a license and as a non-resident in British Columbia to send a message that his tribe still exists. The only way I could see to fight non-existence was uh, to the course. The last Canadian Sinaik's member died in 1956. The Canadian government declared the tribe extinct. But in the U.S., there are at least 4,000 federally recognized Sinaik's members. In 2017, Desitel was acquitted of charges related to illegal hunting. Since then, British Columbia's courts have dismissed two appeals brought by the provincial government. Desitel's attorney, Mark Underhill, says this case is a fight for the tribe's very existence. Not being recognized and, and not being able to be Sinaik's, if you would, really took a toll. The provincial government could take the case to Canada's Supreme Court in Ottawa. In the meantime, Rick Desitel and his family are planning a huge celebration on traditional Sinaik's lands in British Columbia. I'm Emily Schwing reporting. Events are planned across the country this weekend to honor and raise awareness of missing and murdered Indigenous women. China Locket reports on a day of awareness in Rapid City, South Dakota. Nearly one year ago, the city of Rapid City proclaimed May 5th as a day of awareness for missing and murdered Native women and girls. The Red Ribbon Skirt Society has been working to draw awareness to victims. Lily Mendoza is a co-founder of the group. We are actually at our point now in our awareness campaign where we really need to look at going beyond that and educating people in our community. The Red Ribbon Skirt Society recently opened a permanent healing center where people can pray and remember lost ones. The space is the first of its kind and recognizes more than 70 South Dakota indigenous women, children, and two-spirited victims. Mendoza says people from all backgrounds are invited to recognize the Day of Awareness. What we're looking at is doing more outreach into far beyond our Native community. And so we're welcoming in spiritual leaders clergy from all different sectors of denominations to come in and share prayer with us. A Lakota spiritual leader is speaking in the healing center for the event, along with clergy members from an Episcopal church, synagogue, and person who follows Buddhism. Mendoza says they will help lead a prayer for victims, followed by a moment of silence. She says acknowledging the high number of victims is an ongoing process. The Red Ribbon Skirt Society has been working on educating the community through Projects like the Y Campaign. That's a visual arts project that displays empty dresses representing missing and murdered women. We were able to put up an exhibit at the City School Administration Building here in Rapid City, and so there is a red dress exhibit out in the lobby there. The Day of Awareness is scheduled for Sunday. I'm China Lockett in Rapid City. The Oglala Sioux Tribe sent a letter Thursday to South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem stating she's no longer welcome to enter the Pine Ridge Reservation because of her support of two riot-boosting bills. Tribal officials say the bills unfairly target Native Americans and their allies in efforts to keep pipelines away from treaty land. The governor's office released a statement saying Noem has spent time building relations on Pine Ridge and will continue efforts to engage with tribes. I'm Antonia Gonzalez. National Native News is produced by Kiwanak Broadcast Corporation with funding by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Support by BNSF Railway Company. BNSF honors the commitment of Armed Forces members and is a top employer for U.S. military veterans, hiring over 9,000 veterans since 2005. More at jobs.bnsf.com. Support by the American Indian Higher Education Consortium, working to ensure tribal colleges and universities are included in our higher education system. Info on 37 tribal colleges and universities at AIHEC.org. Native Voice One, the Native American Radio Network.